Josh Stanley here and welcome to the channel. These are my tips that I think you need to know before starting in the music industry. Part one, songwriting, because that's the basics of any music. I have these three websites open at all times during my songwriting sessions. Urban Dictionary, Urban Thesaurus, and Rhyme Zone. And all of those are gonna be listed in the description, so make sure you go to check those out after this video. If you're gonna use white people words, as I like to call them, you have to complement them with urban words, and that's where the urban dictionary comes in. And I say a white people word because we have a tendency, as white people, to make cool things very cringe. For example. Now all jokes aside, here's a real life example of what I mean by finding and using urban slang to complement the song and make it feel richer and more raw, which is what you're looking for. So let's take a listen to a small little passage of one of my songs, Swish. She don't wanna play on blazer, so why don't you pocket your ruga? Now, originally the lyrics were, she don't wanna play a smoker, so why don't you pocket your, and I didn't have a rhyme for the last word. So what I did was, and this is a good example of how all three websites come into play, what I wanted to do was replace that word smoker, because to me it just didn't fit right, didn't sit right. I went to Rhyme Zone and I typed in smoker. Here's a little tip, what you wanna do is you wanna go to near rhyme, because those are more interesting rhymes, and sometimes words pop out that you didn't even think would rhyme together. So you use that, and I found the word blazer. Now obviously, I didn't mean the dinner jacket blazer, but I had an idea, you know, smoker, blazer, that kind of has something to do with it. So I went to Urban Dictionary, confirmed what I thought blazer meant. Once I knew it was, you know, someone who smoked a lot of weed, fit perfectly in the song. The next thing I needed was a rhyme for the last word, which became Ruga. I listened to that song, Timmy Turner by Designer, and he used the word burner, which to me, I thought it meant a burner phone. Turns out, it's a gun that's disposable. Something about the gun sounded really cool. I went again, you know, to Rhyme Zone, put in burner, and then Ruger came up. It's uh, the gun company, Ruger. Then I had this idea, what if I can change a gun into the word penis? Bear with me here. The rhyme is, you don't wanna play a blazer, so why don't you pocket your penis? As in, put your penis back in, because this girl's already taken. Probably nobody ever read into that, but that was my trail of thought, and uh, it works. The next one, and this is a big one, is how to conquer writer's yeah. book. Number one, you go to YouTube, you type in artist name, so you find an artist that you wanna write music that's similar to. Type beat, so T-Y-P-E, type beat. Uh, with a year, 2019, 2020. You wanna put in recent years because you want that uh, modern sound, but you know, if you're just gonna songwrite, it's not really important. Once you've found the type beat that you like and you can vibe to, download that shit, go on YouTube to mp3.com uh, or whatever website you use for that. Put it into your DAW. Now I use uh, Studio One, what you can do is Type extract chords and it'll tell you what the chords are. I know Ableton can do the same, but I don't know how accurate it is. If you know how to play an instrument, just you know play the chords out, discard the type beat, and you've got uh, the starting blocks for your song. Now here's the second technique. If you are blocked on lyrics, find an artist that you love or who you think the music is similar to or even something completely out of the box, you go into their lyrics and you search through their lyrics and you look for words and phrases that are interesting and you write those down. You do this for five, six songs. You've got a word bank and you've got an instrumental or you know chords and you can freestyle using those words and that's a starting block. And a bonus tip, so if that doesn't work at all, what I would suggest, you sign up to Tinder you swipe right on somebody, go on a date, uh, you know, nothing sexual has to happen. Listen to their love stories, write a song about it. The next tip is uh, in regard to writing sessions. So if you've started getting contacted by publishers, artists to write on their behalf, or if you're an artist or producer yourself, please listen to these tips. And if you are doing these, then great, because it will help and everyone around you will be uh, so much happier. If you are a producer, pre-program drums, you know, different style of drums, just pre-program them with MIDI or whatnot. Drag and drop them right into the session and you're ready to go, you've got drums. If you're slow at programming drums, saves time. And the vibe is very important. Always maintain the vibe. Have sounds and loops that are ready to go. So for example, if you're with an artist who does dark pop, you know that they need some pads and they need like some dirty, gritty, saturated, piano to go with it. And that's all they need because remember, you are songwriting and not producing at this stage. So if the song sounds good with vocal and piano and a pad, then you know the song's gonna sound dope as hell if you produce it. But if you start producing and sugarcoating and adding all these extra things before the song is even finished, if you don't even have a chorus or something yet, then sometimes it's not gonna be very, very good. One thing we hate is when you uh, start EQing your drums, but you know, we hear the 
you know, loop the section so that we can still vibe to it and get the groove still going, but you can still EQ your drums and make the loop come back. For artists and songwriters, here are my tips. As we had earlier, the word bank, use that, have one, because it is so important, makes it so much more interesting in your songwriting process. If you need something, you can just fill in the word. What I used to do was have songs pre-written as a backup, because if the session goes to shit, you have a song that you can just pop out and finish the session with. So at least you have a final product at the end. For singers, please don't hate autotune. Use it, it's a tool for songwriting. If you're inventing melodies, slap that autotune on, get on the mic, and you'll be surprised. Sometimes autotune gives you artifacts or notes that you didn't think of using, and you go, oh wow, that's really interesting. This is probably one of the most important lessons I've learned so far in my career, and that is how to deal with criticism, even if it makes you wanna quit. So if you made it this far, please leave a comment, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, share it on social media with someone you think would benefit from learning these tips. And I'm thinking of making another video about you know how I got my music to a couple million streams, got on the charts, got on the radio. So if you wanna learn about those, leave a, a comment below. So uh, here goes the story. It's a little short one, and I hope uh, you find it interesting and inspiring. So after I left Berklee College of Music, I got an internship at Whistlewald Studios in the Netherlands, where basically I was uh, setting up studio sessions. I lived in the studio, was breathing studio, eating in the studio. I had a room in the back, so I was there literally 24 seven. And during my free time, I would, I would schedule writing sessions. You know, after two weeks, I got the attention of the studio manager, and I asked him if I could play my songs. He said yes. I grabbed the guitar, start singing my songs, and he's there texting on his phone or writing on notes. And um, I'm not getting emotional. I just have to move my eye. And uh, he did like a Simon Cowell move, you know, when he goes, "Okay, next song." He was a French guy. He looked up from his phone and said, "This is uh, quite shit." It was really bad. The worst part was the, the disappointment, you know, disappointing your family. And one of the things he told me was, you look too clean. I try to make it too perfect, and, th and that's the reason my song sucks. It's not, it's not the songwriting itself, although it partly was. It was very, very cringe. Really bad country music is what it sounded like. I was in my room, and you know you get those emotions like, oh, they don't know what they're talking about. But you gotta listen to what people say. And it was in that moment that I realized he was right. He was very right. I was, I was basically very conscious of what people thought about me. You can't put barriers on your music, because I knew my parents would listen to it so I was like well I'm not gonna talk about my sex life in my in my songs or I'm not gonna swear and I thought I should do that. I should just fuck it. And the next day I came I came to him, I wrote a song and he liked it. Now she's four, three, two blocks away. I'm running late. I gotta get up. And it was that click. So I listened to the comments that he said. That's what I'm trying to get to. Basically listen to what people say. Listen. That's my little story. I hope you learned a lot of tips. Please subscribe to the channel. Leave a like. Leave a comment. Thanks and stay tuned. Let me introduce ya. Young girl from Aruba. She don't wanna play on blazing.